Hey guys, Demon Studios here, how y'all doing? So I'm sure as you guys know when it comes to Ninjago, there are a lot of episodes in the show. Well, almost 200 episodes in fact. And everyone obviously has their own personal favorite and least favorite episodes. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my personal top 10 favorite episodes in the show. This is obviously just going to be my own opinion, yours can be different, and that's totally fine. Also, I'm not going to be putting a limit on one episode per season because I just didn't think that was a good idea. Plus also, there's only one instant where there's two episodes per the same season, so there's that. And so yeah, let's just get into this whole thing then. Number 10, TikTok. This is my personal favorite episode from the first ever season of the show, mainly due to just how much setting up this did and so the rest of the season. For starters, this was the first ever mainly Zane focused episode we got and in a while when it came to the show, and with Zane being my favorite nin, I obviously really like that. Plus, when it came to this episode, it gave us Zane's backstory, plus also the big reveal that Zane was actually a robot, which, hey, that's a pretty neat twist, actually, and in my opinion, and it's one of the rare instances in the show where you have this twist that comes out of nowhere, or that actually makes sense, and in my opinion, is done well. Plus, also, when this is the first time we ever got to see one of the ninja use their true potential, which was really cool, and I like the ending with the reveal of Garvanon's return. That was a pretty neat twist to end on. Again, this is my personal favorite episode from the first season of the show, and again, I just think it's pretty neat overall. Number 9, Game Over. This is the season finale for Prime Empire, and this is my personal favorite episode from the season. For starters, the name in my opinion is just perfect considering Prime Empire was a video game themed season, so it only makes sense for the season finale to be two of the most iconic words in all of gaming, Game Over. And for the episode itself, it was just honestly really cool. Mainly with the massive battle going on between Jay and Unigami on their dragons. That was just an awesome fight to see. Plus, it was also neat to just see a whole bunch of stuff from Prime Empire. You're being brought over into the real world. That was also something I really neat to see. And one of the things that I really like about this episode is the ending, where instead of a massive battle with the ninja defeating the bad guy, rather instead it's a talk between the good guys and the bad guy. It's considering Unigami's whole plan throughout season 12, it wasn't anything like evil or malicious. He just wanted and some answers from his creator, Milton Dyer. Since Tsunigami's an AI program and was just abandoned by Dyer, he had no explanation as to why he Dyer did any of the stuff in the first place. Again, Unigami just wanted an answer. So Anjay realizes how similar he and Unigami are to each other. So I think that was pretty neat. And again, I think it's just a pretty neat sort of twist on the whole ninja to beat the bad guy, considering they didn't like fight it out nor to defeat him. Rather than said they just talked to him. That was pretty neat in my opinion. Plus, it was also neat to see another villain in the show and get turned over to the good side. Again, that was just something pretty neat. Number 8, Curse World Part 1 and 2. I know I'm cheating by including two episodes, but this is the only two-part season finale in the show, so I just figured it kind of makes sense. And oh boy, did the creators of the show go all out. This was the season 5 finale, and again, and the writers, they were just really great with this episode. And in this case, it's Moro was unleashing his full-blown plan to unleash the preeminence and curse all of Ninjago, and the ninja were trying to do whatever they could in order to stop it. And in my opinion, and things just went awesome. We got a whole bunch of great moments, stuff like the ninja getting their new vehicle, this Nia versus more, or Ronin coming back, and a whole bunch of great fight. And so that was all just in the first episode. In the second episode, you have stuff like ninja using your jitsu with their regular elemental color, and the preeminent making its full appearance, which is on some, some more great Ronin moments. Nia unlocked her true potential and Moro's redemption arc. Just a whole bunch of amazing stuff in my opinion. Like I said, this is the only two-part season finale we've ever gotten into the show, and in my opinion, it was just absolutely amazing. And I honestly hope that we get another two-part season finale at some point in the future. Number 7, The Last Resort. It's out of all of the episodes that we got in season 6, this one was definitely my favorite. In this case, Jay and Nia, they were on the run from Nikon and the Sky Pirates, and doing whatever they could in order to stay hidden from it. And because they both knew that if Nikon were able to get Nia, he would be able to marry Nia, and the as Nikon would be able to get infinite wishes. And in my opinion, I think it was a pretty neat place it's where Jay and Nia chose to hide out. Dr. Julian's lighthouse that he was imprisoned on for years. They were the only two people who knew about it, so that was pretty neat in my opinion. Plus also, on the lighthouse, the two of them met Echo Zane, so hey, in a way, we got Zane back in the season, so that was pretty cool. Well, and this episode has one of my absolute favorite battles in the show, with it being Jay, Nia, and Echo Zane versus the Sky Pirates. That was just an awesome battle to see, considering how well the actual location of the battle was used. That was just something pretty neat to see. And the ending of the episode is pretty neat, considering I mean, this was the first time in the entirety of the show Nia ever admitted that she did in fact have feelings for Jay. Like, we knew for a long time 
and she had feelings for Nia, but we weren't really sure if Nia had feelings for him. And in this episode, hey, it turns out Nia does have feelings for him. That's pretty neat. Plus, also the whole twist ending right at the end, where Nia sends Jay away in order to escape. It was a pretty neat twist, actually. And again, out of all the episodes in Skybound, this one was my favorite. Number six, Awakening. And in my opinion, season 11 had an amazing final episode, and it was just absolutely incredible in my opinion. For starters, I like the whole multiple battles that they had going on with this, mainly with the Ninja vs. Boria, and Lloyd Nikita vs. the Ice Emperor. That was something pretty cool, and both battles going on at the same time were again just pretty neat. And with the Ninja vs. Boria, that was a really neat fight to see considering it was the Ninja going up against a dragon. I mean, that is just awesome. And just seriously, the fight itself was really cool to see. Plus, we also got two really, really great moments in there, mainly with Nia being able to use her war powers to control Snow Knights, which was awesome, and Kai getting his powers back all the way. That was really cool. And then you had Lloyd Nikita vs. the Ice Ember, which was another great fight, considering Lloyd was just trying to get through to Zane and convince him to stop doing all this stuff, which is pretty neat. Then you have Nikita's sacrifice towards the end, and where she ends up getting frozen and as a way to just sort of help Lloyd go on a bit more. And also, I really like the one he comes to the fight, Vex is actually the one who ends up defeating the Ice Emperor or by saying the word protect, which is just the one thing that Zane absolutely remembers, just no matter what happens. So in a way, a villain was the cause of their own downfall. That's something pretty neat considering we don't often get that in the show, it's pretty neat. Dan, after Zane remembered everything, he undid everything he did as the Ice Emperor, and in my opinion, and that was just something really neat to see. And so the ninja, they all went home, and it was just pretty great, honestly. And in my opinion, the ending scene is the best ending scene to any season in the show. Just a lot of great moments tying up some characters, uh, and Fanny even setting up a key and Vex's return for the future. Also, a Lloyd Nikita moment that happens right at the end, just that's one of my favorite moments in the show. It is just honestly really great. Number five, The Son of Lily. This is the season finale for Master of the Mountain, and in my opinion, once again, this was a great episode. For Saras, I like the fact that the final battle for this season actually t started in the in the episode prior to the, it's the Uplee Strike Back, so that way the final battle doesn't feel just all condensed into one episode. And the fight itself was pretty cool. In my opinion, Cole vs. the Skull Sorcerer is one of the greatest battles in the entirety of the show, mainly just on an animation standpoint alone, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Plus it was also neat to see the Ninja and the Uplee getting involved in the fight too again, it's the Awakened Warriors, so that was something pretty cool to see. And obviously the best part about this whole fight, same with the whole reveal that the Blaze of Deliverance, they didn't actually have magic inside them, and rather there was Cole's mom herself who was able to defeat Grief and everything, it's the magic inside her, her being the Spinjitzu Burt. And once Cole was able to overcome his insecurity, he was able to unleash the Spinjitzu Burst and he was able to defeat the Skull Sorcerer. That was a pretty great scene to see. And again, it was just awesome. And Vanya's coronation at the end of the season, it was also pretty great. And there was a nice moment between Cole and Vanya, so hey, you know, that was something. And I like how the whole ending of the season basically set up the idea of the ninja just going on more adventures. So again, that was just something pretty neat to see in my opinion. Number 4, The Ultimate Spinjitzu Master. This was the original planned finale of the show in its entirety back in season 2. And in my opinion, if this were where the season or show ended, in my opinion, the show would have gone off with a bang in my opinion. In this moment, the ninja were basically at their lowest point. The Overlord made his way to Ninjago, the Stone Warriors were everywhere in Ninjago City, and Ninjago was becoming fully corrupted by the Dark Matter. Things were looking incredibly bleak. Yet despite that, despite all the odds pushing against them, the ninja still find a way to get back to Ninjago Island, and they did whatever they could to fight again. It's the Overlord and his forces. And the fights, in my opinion, were just honestly really great to see. It was even neat to see Darius just get his own little moment in the sun, basically officially becoming the Brown Ninja. That was pretty neat. And of course, the best moment when it comes into this episode easily has to go to Lloyd versus the Overlord. With Lloyd unlocking his golden pound, when laying the absolute smackdown on the Overlord, that fight was just awesome to see. Plus, the ending scene showing everything getting purified at the end was also something pretty neat to see. Even Garmin got purified, and he became a good guy at the end of the, of the episode. That was just something pretty neat to see. And again, like I said, if this was going to be where the show was going to end, in my opinion, it would have gone off with an absolute bang. Number three. True potential. For me personally, I don't like season 8. In my opinion, it is the worst season in the show, and in my opinion, the episodes overall, they aren't that great. True potential, on the other hand, that is the one and only exception, because in my opinion, that was easily the best episode season 8 gave us, and in my opinion, it's just one of the best episodes in the entirety of the show, actually. 
One of the things that I really like about this episode is just how different it is compared to all the other episodes, mainly with Lloyd and how he's just pushing everyone in a way as a result of her roommate's betrayal and his trust issues with this old character arc and that again started in this season. And eventually leading into the big Cryptarian prison battle with Lloyd fighting against his own dad, Lord Garmon, in the most brutal battle in the show. And in my opinion, the best battle in the show, in my opinion, with just Lloyd and Garmon fighting against each other. This fight was just brutal and just amazing to see, honestly. And with Lloyd trying to get through to his dad and Garmon just not listening to him at all, basically. He seemingly implying that Garna just doesn't care at all about Lloyd this moment, and that he only cares about being evil and destructive and wanting to take over and jog again. And that's just the side of Garna we've never seen in the show, and that was pretty neat in my opinion. And plus, it was also interesting to just see how little Garna actually cared about Lloyd. Like, towards the end of the fight, he literally said to Lloyd, I have no son, and then proceeded to throw him through two concrete walls. I mean, seriously. That fight is just brutal, honestly. I mean, just the yeah, so dark and cliffhanger, right? I think, in my opinion, was a pretty neat way for the penultimate episode of the season 10. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of season 8. Again, in my opinion, it's the worst season of the show and is really overrated. But I do have to give credit to this episode as being just one of the best episodes the show has ever given us. Number 2. Last of the Formlings. Out of all the post-movie episodes we have gotten, this one is easily my absolute favorite one. For starters, I like the whole idea that when it comes to this episode, it's a flashback episode focusing on a non-ninja character. We haven't really gotten this when it comes to the show, and in my opinion, you know, the writers pulled this thing off spectacularly, honestly. And with the focus on Akita, a character who we've just been introduced in the previous episode, it made perfect sense to give her a backstory episode. And what we learned in the episode was just absolutely amazing. And we learned more about the formal things and just where they were from and what their whole thing is. And we also learn more about Vex, the true main antagonist of the Ice Ember, who was originally from the Formling Village, and he ended up not finding his animal form, causing him to just become paranoid and angry towards the world. That was something pretty interesting to see. And just a whole bunch of stuff throughout the episode was absolutely amazing. And I also really like how throughout the episode, we got a bunch of moments where the story was just told to the visuals and music with little to no dialogue. That is something we rarely ever get when it comes to the show, and I really like it. I also personally really like the decision to go with a different art style for this episode rather than just the regular 3D and the anime stuff instead of going with the 2D stuff that was introduced in the same season lot. I mean, again, in my opinion, this only made the episode better. In my personal opinion, in Last of the Formlings is easily the most underrated episode in the entirety of the show, and it was actually this episode that just helped me develop my opinions on it. And after this episode, she became one of my absolute favorite characters in the show. Number one, the Titanium Ninja. This is the season three finale and just, oh my gosh, I love this episode so much. I'm sorry, it picks up right after where the previous episode, The Void, and with the ninja stuck in space on the common Arcturus while the Overlord has gotten the golden weapon, is back in Ninjago City and preparing for his full scale assault on the city. And things don't go good for Ninjago City, considering the Overlord is able to get the Golden Armor and he becomes the Golden Master. Again, things look bleak, but luckily the ninja are able to get back to Ninjago City and they're able to do battle against the Overlord, getting the awesome looking stone armor in the process. That's pretty cool. Plus, the actual fight against the Overlord, once again, is just something pretty neat to see. And the few battles that happen against the ninjas, they're also pretty neat. But obviously, the big moment when it comes to this episode that everyone talks about is the ending with Zane's sacrifice. This is easily my favorite moment in the entirety of the show because it just shows how much of a hero Zane really is. He was willing to sacrifice himself to save everyone, basically not caring that he would die in the process. And he knew that this would happen to him, but again, he just didn't care. Or he just wanted to do whatever he could in order to save the people who he cared about. That just shows how much of a hero Zane really is. And the funeral that until from right at the end was pretty neat. But it was also neat for the whole twist thing that happened at the end of season three, where as it turns out, Zane, he's not actually dead, and he did in fact survive the whole thing. And he's actually building himself a new body inside, you know, Boar Tower's factory. That's a pretty neat way to end. And so that's basically all I got for you guys. So tell me down below what do you guys think. For your guys' personal 10 favorite episodes in the show, again, don't down below, and I hope you guys enjoy. Later, guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.